marketing and one on social media. In both those sessions, the speaker said the one most important part of digital content to work on is video. So hence why we're doing today's session. And I think you will all notice through lockdown that we've seen a lot more video. Um, we've seen more on social media channels. We've seen more from people, but also from businesses. And, you know, even watching TV on, you know, primetime TV, huge organisations are doing DIY video, home videos, probably filmed on a phone, um, you know, for, for major brands. And that's become sort of quite normal for us to see this kind of video content, very human, very personable. So it, it really is relevant to a wide range of businesses, big and small, on main primetime TV and on social media channels. So um, really delighted to have Ryan Mulhern from First Frame Productions here today with us. Um, hi, this is, hi, Ryan. So this is really Ryan's speciality. And those of you who've been with us a while will know, remember that Ryan came and did a talk on um, DIY video marketing a couple of years ago, about a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah about... Yeah, something like that. It was October, wasn't it? 2018, I believe. Something like that. So, so in that, Ryan really looked at the practical um, techniques of creating good quality video. And Ryan is a real advocate of that anyone can produce good quality video using your smartphone phone and using it on, on um, your social media channels. Um, and so Ryan will cover a bit of that today, but this is this is um, specifically around video content in a pandemic. So Ryan will cover some national trends and show examples of really good video content marketing that he's seen. Um, he will talk about the tips, but he'll also talk about content itself, what makes good video content. So he's mapped out a customer journey for you to really talk about how you can map out your video content marketing strategy. So not only will we learn from Ryan how to practically film in a high quality way, but also um, what makes good content. So hopefully um, you'll go away with some inspired and with some really good tips. I know I need it. Um, so Ryan's going to pause through the session at various points for you to ask questions through the chat. Um, if you don't get your questions answered or we run out of time, we will take questions through the session. Just post them on the chat and I'll pose them to Ryan at the end. Um, hopefully we can do that within the hour. Um, and if um, Ryan has said he would stay online for a few minutes afterwards if anyone wants to talk to him directly. So um, do do post questions online. Do stay on mute if you can. Um, we will be sharing slides straight after the session and the recording of this session will be available online um, from tomorrow. So don't worry if you can't keep up and you're not making enough notes because we will share all this out. OK, so I think that's everything from me um for now and i'll um see you at the end so i'm just going to pass over to you ryan okay thank you very much i'll take over thank you jess and uh thanks for having me guys and uh for all those all those that don't know me nice to virtually meet you and i'm going to crack on my presentation now so i'm just going to share my screen hopefully all's going to run smoothly today um one second well it's not running smoothly straight away give me one second my presentation's not open for some reason here we go right that's perfect I'm new to Teams, by the way. I normally use Zoom, so uh, uh, Zoom, you know what I mean? But it's so uh, let's just see. Right, let me just share my screen and get my presentation on the go. So just a quick one. When I play videos today, guys, I will, um, I've got to play it through the computer. Normally on Zoom, you can press something where it will play the sound of the video into, onto your computer. But so I'm not using headphones, so it's playing out, if you like. So hopefully the audio will be OK. But um, what I'm going to do very quickly is um, I'm going to start anyway. So what I want to talk today about is obviously about video content in a pandemic and how, you know, we can adapt and thrive and be visible. So obviously I'm, I'm going to kind of speak for most people here and say that majority of businesses have been affected by COVID-19 over the last few weeks and months. Um, and, you know, there's been so it's given businesses different options. You know, some will maybe have stayed as they are and hope for the best. I think they might have hit a bit of a, a challenge at some way along the road. Um, for some, they might have just closed the door on the world and maybe forever. You know, I spoke to an accountant the other week and they said they, they had to close about five businesses that week. It was quite a shame, but really it wasn't it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't worth them carrying on. Um, but for others, you know, the, there's the option there that is to adapt and thrive. And then I, I think that will help businesses survive. 
Um, you know, so many businesses have changed in different ways. There's a few examples. You know, some restaurants have become takeaways. Um, you know, some event companies are now virtual cocktail makers. Uh, and, you know, many companies have, have actually had to become online retailers overnight to survive and earn money. So it's really interesting to see how people have changed. And I'm sure you've heard the word pivot probably far too much. Um, but that's what we're going to talk about. So we'll talk about adapting instead. But for those businesses, but how do they actually get their message out there once they have changed? So there's a, you know, we've been left with just, just a few options because we can't get out there and film and things like that. So one of the things which you may notice, which we're actually doing at the moment, is video conferencing. So, um, you know, Zoom calls, Microsoft Teams, webinars, things like that. And it's been great. You know, personally, I've, I've done loads of Zoom calls. I've really enjoyed chatting to different people, you know, um, in different countries as well over, over Zoom as well. So it's been really interesting. And I don't think I'll go out and meet as many people as co for coffees in the future. I'll try and save time and, and speak to people virtually. Um, so just a little, a couple of little stats I've got here. Zoom calls have actually risen 67% since before the pandemic. And amazingly, there's 20 million more Zoom users since February and March. So, you know, you're probably rubbing your hands together if you're the CEO of, of Zoom. So uh, quite interesting there, really. Uh, but that, that's pretty pretty interesting to see how the world has changed and, and adapted quite quickly, really. Um, but there's been a lot of bad practice out there, guys. A lot of things going wrong. Now, you might have seen this. Um, this is an example of a, a lady that was, a manager was holding a, a, I think it was a Microsoft Teams meeting for her colleagues, and uh, she turned herself into a potato by accident. So, uh, and she couldn't, she couldn't change that for the whole meeting from what I hear. So that's quite interesting. I don't know, would you take me seriously if I was a potato today? I'm not too sure. And uh, here's quite a cool video I found as well of, of something else that went wrong during Zoom. And there's many of these, but I just wanted to show you one which is hilarious. So let's listen to this. Oh, one second, what's going on there? Slight technical hitch. Hopefully. Hi. 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 So I love that guy's laugh. It's, it kind of makes that video. So uh, something else I, I saw yesterday as well was actually, you know, video conferencing is actually good when you're kind of closing sales as well. Um, you know, it has higher close rates than meeting face to face, but it's good if, you know, you can just say to someone, can we jump on a Zoom call? It creates rapport as well. It gets people to know you very quickly as well. So you don't need to be, you know, in, you know, face to face with them as well. And it kind of, you know, it helps businesses. Apparently, you know, from what I hear is, you know, the first business to simply talk to the prospect has got 70% more chance of, or winning that business over time and that's from Marcus Sheridan and if you've ever if you haven't read his book and um, they ask you answer I highly recommend that if you're looking to create content and inbound inbound content as well so obviously a lot of film shoots you know a lot of companies want to create videos but a lot of film shoots got cancelled for a certain amount of time as well so how has this changed things well it means that people have to have to make videos in different ways or at least you know create diff different videos that relate to people so here is an advert by the co-op which is really really cool and it kind of relates to everyone, the fact that everyone's at home doing Zoom calls. And I think it's really quite authentic. So I'll quickly show this video. Ah, oh, sorry, it's the wrong video. It's a slight technical hitch. It's, it's trying to recreate, it's trying to reconnect to all my videos, which were connected a minute ago. So it took me two seconds. Um, And this is a Sainsbury's one, but it's using images and uh, just images and text, basically, and something at the end to go through. To all our colleagues, thank you for stepping up, for stacking up, staying strong. Well, for everything, Sainsbury's. So yeah, I've had to either use uh, imagery and text and things like that and, and edit differently or, or send it. It's not that smile today. So we've got someone uh... there. We've got... <laughs> we, need to, we need to mute someone. I don't know who, where that voice is coming from. Christopher, are you muting everyone? 
Yep, that's everybody now. <laughs> Everybody's muted. Perfect. Chris, I'm just going to try and find this advert again. It's, it's disappeared from my uh, mo um, One second. Sorry, guys. Slight technical pitch here. I need to... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I found it. So, right, if we can go back to full screen. Sorry, that put me off a little bit there. Just one second. So, ho hopefully, this will play the co-op advert. Very shyly, don't they? I know me. Even though we can't be in the same room. We can still pull together. And help those in need. Can you hear me? We want to get behind Fair Share. The food charity. And we're, Sorry, you go. And we're making it easy for us all to do our best. To be a local hero. Cop has pledged £1.5 million pounds worth of food to kick it off. You can donate money in store today. Or by texting Niels to 70490 to give a turn up. Because even though we're apart, we, we can still help each other out. out. Okay, guys, can you see my screen? Okay, just checking. A, a message came up then. Can you hear me, Jess? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, that's good, and you can see that. Yeah, so that was just a very quick example of the co-op, uh, learning to adapt, adapt to using, 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 and kind of, and using to show people that they're kind of being authentic and really, and they're human too as well. You know, they've got to work from home too and things like that. Here's an, an example of uh, what, what we've had to do. We've actually had to adapt as a client as well. And a client, um, came to us and they were like, they said to us, could you create a video on Zoom? Never heard that before, but we were like, yes, we can. And they wanted to show that they work from home and they go through the same things as their clients. This is a very quick snippet of what we play, of what we uh, created for them. Um, I'll just very quickly get this video up. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to have a real, here we go. So here we go. So we added a logo animation at the start. So you get the idea. So that was nice. So they had many different issues, such as working, you know, working from home, such as being lonely, you know, missing being in the office, you know, childcare and working. So they wanted to tell their customers that and that they're there to help. And that was all done over Zoom and in a day. And they, they really like it. And they're using it on their homepage at the moment. I'm not going to show the next video because I'm having a, a little issue connecting these new videos that I put on because I used it on a hard drive. But that's fine. But essentially, it was a similar to the Sainsbury's one where we had to use customers' videos and imagery to put together a video for them so they can get out the, the message that they're actually, they're, they've actually adapted as well. And instead of being an events company, they're, being, they're actually making Sunday roasts and delivering to them to people's homes. So as well as video conferencing, um, another big way of getting your message out there is DIY video marketing, using one of these things, which is a, obviously a smartphone, which I'm gonna say majority of us have got. Um, so, you know, obviously using smartphones is a great way to do it, but there's a lot of people doing it wrong, guys, as well. There's a lot of bad practice out there as well. So this is a little video I put together. Please do not copy what is on this video. This is bad practice from what I've kind of realized, you know, I've seen on, on, on a, from people starting to use that. And more and more people are starting to do videos on their smartphones, but a lot of people are getting it wrong. So please don't do this, okay? So I'm going to play this video. No, guys, I don't know about you, but there seems to be a lot of bad quality videos going around LinkedIn at the moment. Does my chin look bit in this or what? Now, there's an argument to say that a bad quality video could have a bad effect on your personal brand. Now, just because you've got a camera on your phone, guys, doesn't mean that you can make a great quality video. I really need to get that tripe off from Amazon. Video is a great way of talking directly to your audience. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you, talking to you. And it's a great way to really take time out to connect with your audience. Is that the time already? Correct. Let's go. It's not a time to be vain. quite good at this angle, actually. Now, LinkedIn can be a great environment to spread your message. Psycholinia, one last thing. Don't listen to me. Have a great day. So that's an example of bad practice, guys. Do not copy that, please, because uh, it will not look good. So now what I want to do is I want to show you how to make your smartphone videos look brilliant. And also, this actually applies to video communication, such as Zoom and Teams as well because many of the fundamentals are very much the same, you know, how to kind of uh, compose yourself on camera and things like that. So that, guys, is not, not my best look. And many people do that. You know, they have the camera, the, you know, the phone down there. And it's, uh, you know, if you're a bit self-conscious about double chins, it's not the best way. So what you want to do is you want to bring it to eye level. And if you're doing Zoom or Teams on a laptop, you want to, you know, place that on some books and bring it to eye level. You don't, people don't want to see up your nose and they don't want to see 
your ceiling either. So bring your camera um, and your lens, computer, whatever it may be, to eye level. You know, we all talk to people to eye level at a networking event. So, you know, just try and remember to do the same, okay? And again, don't have it up there either. You know, it's not um, it's not the only way is Essex. You know, it's not a, vain, a vanity competition. So have that have it at eye level. Another thing you can do as well is you can, uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing smartphone video, you can have a tripod as well. So hopefully you can see this. I can't actually see myself, but essentially I've got a smartphone video tripod here. And what I do is you just put your smartphone in there and then it sits kind of down there and I can move my body away from it about a metre and it frees up my body to be a bit more relaxed. Um, I can be about a metre away, about an arm's length away is rule of thumb, if you like. And then it just free, frees your, your hands up as well. It just makes it a lot more easier and relaxing to do. And then you can set your background, relax and go ahead with it. Another thing as well, guys, is to find the lens. The lens, okay? Many people get this wrong and they'll do a video like this and they'll be talking to their audience and they'll be, yeah, I'm talking to you, but really people are like, well, who are they talking to? Because they don't look like they're talking to me and they look a bit weird. They might not look very confident on camera. And, you know, I've seen CEOs, directors, marketing managers do this. And I'm like, you know, sometimes I'm messaging them going, please, can I give you some tips? So, you know, look at some of my videos because you're really detrimenting your personal brand by doing it. So always, guys, look at the lens. And if, if you're on your phone, that is your lens there, OK? Find out where your lens is. Do some practice and always find the lens. Don't look at yourself on the screen because that is not the lens, OK? Same on video calls. It's, it's quite hard, you know, you're normally looking at each other like that, but you've got to look up. Um, some, someone did something really cool. They put like a, a pair of goggles or like some fake goggles on, on, on the front. So they always look up or a pair of eyes um, next to their lens. That, that's, so it's a few little tricks. Another thing as well to compose yourself, you can use rule of thirds. So the human eye is naturally attracted to these points. So if you look, the lady doesn't have loads of headspace. So she's, um, you know, she's quite high. She's filling the screen, if you like. So she's not, you know, slouched down like that. She's, she's up, you know, she's close to the screen. She's on to one side as well. So if, let's just say she was presenting to camera, she might have something behind her quite interesting. Let's just say she's talking about, I don't know, an event at Leeds Arena or something like that. That'll be to the side of her. So she'll be taking up one third and the, the, the kind of subject taking up two thirds. And again, she can be in the middle as well. So if you're on a Zoom call or whatever, you can be in the middle, but always, you know, have that line going through kind of your head, if you like. So you, you don't have too much headspace from the top. Uh, and you, you kind of fill in the screen, as I said, and you'll see this in different movies as well. And you can always you can always slight your body a little bit to the other way. If you move to one side of the screen, slight your body a little bit to the other way, as you've seen this guy do and Morgan Freeman do there. But if, if you want to learn more about the rule of thirds and how to implement it, just just do a quick Google search. But you see it with a lot of uh, filming, artwork, things like that. It's quite commonly used. Um, and if you're filming something as well. You know, you can get a grid up on your camera. So this is you're showing the surfer and rule of thirds. And obviously the sea and the horizon is above that top line as well. Um, now, if you've got a, an iPhone, what you can do is you can go into settings and then camera and you can just go onto something called grid and just make sure just tick that there. And that will bring up the grid as you're filming and it will just make it easier for you to compose your camera. And that's the same as well on like a Galaxy or an Android and things like that. OK, and you, you can um, obviously get the grid lines on there. Uh, again, if you're if you want to get some kind of text up, some logos, you can be in rule of thirds again. You can bring up your logo, and then you can bring up some text to kind of help you um, set the scene and, and help you kind of get your message across a bit. You know, like a bit of text every ten seconds or something like that. So now onto lighting. Now a lot of people make the mistake of having their back to windows. You know, I, when we run workshops in the city centre, you know, we'll run it in an office or a hotel with got big windows and they'll be like, wow, the, the, the city looks really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my back to that and show the city. Um, but what actually happens is the, the phones actually try and expose for you or they try and expose for outside. Now, if they try and expose for outside, you're actually going to be a silhouette um, because the outside is going to be exposed for. And if they try and expose for you, the outside is going to be totally blown out, overexposed. So it kind of defeats the point, defeats the object. So what you actually want to do is you want to roll reverse and you have, want to have the light in front of you. So using natural light, you don't need to buy lights. So have the natural light coming in onto your face. So I've actually got lights here to kind of set the scene today, make it look a, bit, a little bit more professional. Um, but once you use that natural light, remember what is in the back is going to be seen. So you've got to set your scene for your office, for your house. Um, basically, don't do this. OK, this guy was being interviewed live on TV. Uh, he's obviously a politician or something. And he's totally ruined himself. You know, people are being distracted. I'm not looking at him. I'm looking 
at the pillows, at the you know the state of the room. He might have some good stuff to say, and a bit like you might have some good stuff to say when you're doing video content, but he's ruining his, his brand and distracting people. So make sure your background is good. So that's the fundamentals, guys. If you want to take a screenshot of that, go ahead. Um, if anyone's got any questions now, very quickly, I'm happy to take a couple of quick questions before I go on to the next part. Um, let me just see if I can get Teams up. I seem to have lost Teams again. Are there any questions, guys, um, from anybody? If not, not a problem. How do you get text up the screen? Sorry, do to say that again? How do you get text up on the screen when you're taking a picture? Oh, text up on the screen. So you basically use a, uh, you can use an app such as InShot, which I'm actually going to show you very shortly. So um, I'll show you the app and it's downloadable on iPhone and Android. So you can just bring text in on that. There's a little function. You just press text and you can bring that onto your, uh, onto your video. Can you also have the prompt going on so you can actually read from the screen as well as having it on InShot as well? Oh, you mean like an I, you mean like an auto cue? I do, yes. Yeah, so there's a really good app called Big View, B I G V U. So you can use that. I would I would type it in a text box, guys, but I can't seem to access it because I'm on a I'm on a full screen on here. But if if you want to chat at the end, we can I can always reiterate that. But Big View is very good, and it's uh, but that is an app in itself. Then you bring that into InShot once you've recorded your footage. Okay. Awesome, guys. Right, I'm going to crack on. If there's no more questions, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about equipment and the fundamentals of equipment that you kind of really really need um, you don't need anything stupidly good um, but here's what I'd recommend you use to help you be more professional um, so you know you've got tripods smartphone clamps audio gear and things like that so the first thing is a tripod which I've shown you one before the one on the right here is just a short tripod and what you can do is you can kind of combine that with a smartphone video clamp you just put that on top then you can just carry that around you know if you go to an event or you're traveling on a train whatever you may be um, it's really great because you can use that as a handheld device, but you can also put that on a shelf to keep it stable or on a desk, you know, on some books and things like that. So that's quite cool. And it's only, you know, £35 with a smartphone clamp and you can actually get cheap ones as well. But it's got a bit of weight to it. So if you did want to walk and talk, it's quite handy as well to use that. OK, so um, in terms of the smartphone clamp, this is if you've got a tripod at home, this, this is a good way of actually putting it onto your tripod and making your tripod become more of a professional kind of piece of equipment to allow you to get some more professional shots. So if you give it a second, then you can do, you know, the old tilt and pan and things like that. Okay, so it just makes it a little bit more professional rather than using it handheld. So the next one, a lot of people ignore audio. Audio is very, very important. You know, there's a lot of auditory people out there that if you don't have good audio, they will just switch off your video and you won't get any engagement on it. Okay. So this is a Smart Lab Plus, um, Rode Smart Lab Plus. It's £42 on Amazon. Okay, highly recommended. It plugs straight into your phone. You do need an adapter, um, depending on what phone you've got, but you can just Google, you know, uh, small jack to say iPhone 11 adapter uh, and then use that that way. And it just records straight into your video when you do it. So here's a very quick example of before and after of not using the microphone and then using it. And this is in a windy place with a stream. So take a listen. I've got a manufacturer tripod there. It is probably called this. All you can do is you can get this amazing little piece of kit here. I think it was about £15 on Amazon, and it's a smartphone adapter, so you can just plug it into a tripod. So what you do, okay, so you can hear a massive difference there, and uh, so I highly recommend it. And you know, with anything with like shaky video, whatever it may be, all these things that you can put in place, the better you can make your video, and if the content's great, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna kind of give yourself, a, a, you know, more chance of engagement. If your content isn't very good, guys, there's a good chance that your video won't do very good anyway. So that is a, that's one of the things. A lot of people say, why didn't my video do great? I've done all these things. It's like, if, essentially, if the content's not very good or if you're trying to sell to people, people don't like that. So the gimbal is something quite cool as well. When I was at Leeds Trinity, I did a bit of a gimbal walk to show people how to use this. But essentially, it's got a motor on it, so it keeps your phone steady as you're walking. So for establishing shots like this, it'll make it nice and smooth. So this is not how to do it. This is handheld, not very good. I can't wait to get back to my parents' uh, place in Mallorca, by the way. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a while. But then this is with the gimbal as well. So think about the, uh, look at the smoothness. Okay, you've got to keep your knees bent, your arms in to do the gimbal walk. You might look a bit silly, but 
okay you're gonna get some real cool footage out of it okay and then there's other things like that on your phone like time lapse if you've got an iphone you've got the uh you, you've got the kind of in the camera there you can just swipe across and you've got time lapse essentially it speeds up time and if you've got an android you can just type in um time lapse into the app store or google store or something like that and there should be a free app there i think there's one called frame lapse and just just give it a go guys it creates cool content like this you know this was like a, a five minute journey sped up into about you know 20 seconds and it just for me i like seeing really cool visual content you know b-roll cutaway footage and it just it just helps kind of tell a story you know put some nice music on that it'll really kind of you know, help your video become, take it to the next level. Anyone got any questions, guys? Before I talk about some apps, which you're all eager to hear about the apps we're going to talk about. If no, that's cool. We can, uh, we can always chat at the end. I can't see the chat box anyway, so um, we can, uh, so that's, there's no, no problem with that. Let's check. Yeah, I don't think there are any questions from that section, Ryan. We might have to ask some more at the end. Yeah, no worries. We can wait to the end. That's fine, guys. Don't worry about that, okay? So oh, sorry, I... sorry, Ryan. Someone's Charlotte Haggerty's just asked, how do you access the eye time lapse? The eye time lapse. So right, if you go on your, if this is on um, if she's on an iPhone, if you can see my screen, basically if I go to camera, if I go to camera, there just at the bottom, you, you're obviously going through all the different things there, and you scroll along to time lapse. So there's time lapse, slow motion, video, photo, portrait, pano. So Great. time lapse, and you just press it to start. Make sure it's on a tripod, and leave it ten minutes. Press it to stop. Um, if if it's a if the, if it's a day where the sun's in and out the clouds, try and uh, you know look at the clouds and, and do that because it's quite cool. Or film a high street when it gets busier, or cars and things like that. So it's quite cool. Good, thank so, you, for Charlotte. <laughs> no worries. So now you've learned how to film. You've got all the equipment. You need some apps to put your content together. So one of my favourite. One second. One of my favourite apps is called Quick. It's Q U I K, and it's free on I iPhone and Android. And essentially, what it does is it uses artificial intelligence to put together your clips. Okay. So um, what I've done here is I've got an example where I I present a video first, an intro to an event, then I go and I take 10, 10 shots of ten seconds on my phone, and I put that into Quick, and it stitches it together with different templates, music, transitions. Um, you know, color grading software. It's really, really cool. And the fact that it's free and it creates a video in less than five minutes is pretty awesome. So I put this video together in like literally less than 10 minutes, um, which is pretty cool. So it's at an event. I think I did one of these for Leeds Trinity actually when I first went to it. So um, yeah, just take a look. And it, it, it's, it's not groundbreaking, but it tells a story of the event and the, the event organizer loved it. And he showed his family because he'd never had a video made before. So, um, and he thought I'd done it on a professional camera. Hello guys, hope you're well. So I'm down here at Manhattan at Bree Street today and I'm down here for the Business Catalyst Lunch, a new networking event I've never been to. So I'm uh, really looking forward to getting in, meeting some new people. Let's go and take a look. So I was just telling a story there, guys, and uh, if you notice, I put a few different things in there, like I put time lapse in there as well, and uh, that was really easy to create. So what I mentioned before, another, another app is called InShot. So this allows you to edit together your footage as well, um, add music, things like that, add titles. And what I like about InShot is you can actually create kind of square video as well. So you put your widescreen video in there. If anyone follows me on LinkedIn, I like to make square videos so you can what you can do is you go back and you put your widescreen video, make a one by one canvas, and then you can add, add your kind of your your background. So it makes it a square video. So my branding is orange, so I'll add an orange background. I will then add text in the top. You know, it's just the best video ever because you want to add text to entice people to watch your video to create up, you know, to take up that space. 
Um, then you can leave some, some options for your captions below, which you can put into a different app, which I'm going to show you now as well. So that's InShot. It's got all loads of different things in there. You, you know, you can add, add text, you can add pictures in there. You could bring your, if your logo is on your phone, you can bring that in through an image. Um, so it's, it's all about playing around with it, guys. It's all about working what you want to do. There's so many apps out there, but you need to work out what you want to achieve and then work out how you're going to do it with the app, okay? That, there's no point in just going into an app and, you know, going silly with it. I think you need to work out what, what your, what your uh, kind of end goal is with anything in life and then work out how you're going to do it because there's about thousands of apps that do the same now, uh, but it's finding one that works for you and kind of get used to that and, you know, just get better and better. You're not going to be you know, a professional overnight. So just keep working at that. So 80% of people also, you know, read video these days. You know, people are on a busy commute. They're in an office where they can't have sound on. So they might have to read video, okay? So we, uh, so we need to add captions, what some people call them subtitle. They're actually called captions. So here's a call app that I've recently seen. It's something called uh, Mixed Captions. It is only available on iPhone, but there's something very similar called AutoCap. That is AutoCap, which is on an Android, and that's free as well. So what you do is you essentially make your video in your normal camera, and then you upload it to Mixed Captions. You click Generate Captions, give it a couple of minutes. It prepares the captions for you and then transcribes them, and then, give it a second, then if you see below, it's got, it's playing the video now, and uh, it's got the captions below, so it's really, really cool. So this is just an intro video that you'd use at the start of the video, and then... Um, can... And what you can use, which is really cool, if it, if it doesn't transcribe it properly, you can go down and you can change the text in there as well, which is really cool. Then you can just export that. You might have to pay a few quid to, uh, you know, to get rid of the mixed captions, um, what you call it, watermark, but it's a really cool app, and the fact that it does it that quickly is, is just kind of groundbreaking for me. It's really, really cool, and it's, it just saves a lot of time, and it makes you look more professional. You know, it helps you get more engagement on your videos as well. Okay, so that's mixed captions. So another way of adding captions as well is, um, let's just say you've created your video, and you want to, you want, you, what you can do is you basically, you don't want to use an app, you can actually upload something called rev.com, which is a website. So you have to go on rev.com, you have to upload your video onto the website. Okay, you go services, then you go into captions. And for $1, it's now $1.25 per minute. Someone will write your caption file for you and they'll send it back via email. Okay, you just upload your video and they'll tell you how much it is there and then. And then um, you might need an edit suite to put the caption in. It's called an SRT file. Or if you're using something like LinkedIn, you can just upload that SRT file with your video and the caption file will, will um will arrive on there as well. I'm, I can't remember exactly how it is on Facebook. It might be similar, but on YouTube as well, there's another option on YouTube, upload the video. YouTube also actually creates captions for you without anything doing that. But always with any caption creation tool, make sure that, um, that what it's saying is what you said in the video, because it's not always 100% correct. But have a play around with that. Have a look at rev.com and work out the best way that works for you, okay? Any questions about uh, that section? Do we have any questions, Jess? Mm, can you um, then upload InShot onto Facebook and other social media? Yes, yeah, so exactly, yes. Yeah. So essentially what you do is you, you export your video to your phone. One thing I'll talk about in, in, a, in a little while is um, always is, is about native video. So whenever you export your video from any app, make sure you export it onto your phone, okay, as a, as a video file. Don't share it via the app onto a social media platform because you won't get any, it, it, the, the social media platform will kind of suppress the engagement. It wants to be a native video. So you want to upload that video file to your social media platform of choice, whether it be Facebook, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, you have to anyway, you can't just post a link because um, it won't play the video. So, um, so yeah, get used to doing that because you'll, you'll boost the engagement on all, you know, and it'll become more organic. And then if you share your videos, it'll go back to your profile where you've shared them from anyway. Brilliant. And Nick Wayne just asked, um, can you edit incorrect captions? I think you said we you could. Can you edit in? Incorrect captions. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. below in mixed captions, you can just go and put put right what was wrong. So it's quite it's quite cool. And there's other apps like which I've mentioned in the past called Clips on the iPhone, which uses artificial intelligence to bring up what you're saying. And you can always correct that as well. So it's really good. Um, right. And if, if, if rev.com send you an SRT file, it's a text file, you can correct that as well before that goes live as well. Okay. 
So now I want to show you five ways to make your video stand out. You know, social media is a noisy place, okay? Lots more people are making videos. Lots more people are making very bad videos as well. So how can you stand out, you know, through the noise? So one thing is you can add a thumbnail as well to entice people to watch your video. So essentially like on, on LinkedIn, this is the first like split second of your video. On Facebook, you can actually choose your thumbnail. So you can use part of the video. Um, but you can also upload a thumbnail as well on, on, on all these platforms as well, on even Instagram as well. So what you can do is you need to create a thumbnail. So, but essentially, is so you might see it on YouTube where you're scrolling down the first frame or you know the, it's a preview of the video is the thumbnail. So you want to make sure that's that's drawing people in. You know, you know what video should be in your in your strategy? Is this the best video you've ever seen? You know, um, things like that enticing people in because that you know. A lot of people put like, you know, models on the front of their videos to entice, you know, women or men in to watch those videos as well. It's a bit of a false, a false pretense, if you like, but you've got to work out what you're going to use. So I use something called Cam Canva. You can use Photoshop, but Canva is so easy. Um, and then you can get different dimensions. It's got loads of templates as well. So this on I'm showing you here is a template and I just put my image on there and it just kind of, you know, I put I make it orange to go with my brand. And then just kind of use that and it just makes it so much easier but it makes you look so much more professional as well and then people start to recognize when you're posting videos if you're posting regular content so that's a thumbnail the next thing what you want to do is you've got your widescreen video you want to add top and bottom bars okay like that and then you and then so it creates a square video you know mobile phone as well kind of favors square video and uh, you know you can you can use it on all, all kind of different platforms instagram facebook linkedin you know, you can't go wrong with a square video. It takes up a bit of space as well. And then what you want to do is you add some a catchy title. You can also colour your background as well, your square video, and add a catchy title as well, again, to entice people in. So five ways, five ways to make your video stand out. If this was, you know, if this was on someone's profile and someone liked it, this is making it easier for people who I'm not connected with to, to see that video and to watch my video to kind of increase the engagement from it, okay? Then from there, what you want to do is you want to add your captions, okay? So you can bring your, I've got the bottom bar empty, so I'm bringing my captions on there, and you can do that through kind of the, the uh, mixed captions as well, or, you know, if you've got an edit suite, Premiere Pro, things like that, you can do that as well. And then if you're really cool, you can make some really good B-roll cutaway footage. That's essentially what that is, is if I was talking to camera about something, you might not see me for the whole thing, you might see someone else talking about something, okay? So that's essentially B-roll or cutaway footage. Because you don't want to just see me, you know, my ugly mug talking to camera for the whole time. You want to bring the story to life, bring the video to life by saying it. So some B-roll footage like this uh, below. <laughs> So it brings the video to life, okay? So that is five ways of, of really kind of making the most of your video and making, you know, making more people see it and engaging it as well, okay? So what I'm going to go into now for the last section is the t it's a bit of video marketing and the types of videos that you need to be creating. So what I'm going to go through now is a bit of the customer journey through video. So it's really important, you know, a lot of people just make promotional videos and I'm sorry guys for those people out there, maybe they used to work in the past, but it doesn't necessarily work anymore. You really need to be giving people advice and warming your audience up, okay? A lot of people are going for the kill and just do a promotional video, but they wonder why they don't get much engagement on it. It's because they're not really talking to the audience, they're just trying to sell to them straight away. So one tactic that I've been using, one strategy is to always be putting out how-to videos and advice videos, okay? You know, three tips on how to, you know, do a VAT return, three tips on how to make a good video, you know? Three tips on how to, you know, what, what's the, you know, showing someone martial arts, and there's a martial arts expert on today, okay? And adding advice. You know, other things you can do is you can do vlogs as well. You can talk to camera about something informative, um, you know, and this is all on social media, by the way. So you're, you're, you're warming people up on social media, giving out free content. And then there's also, you know, if you want to be a bit, you know, become a bit of a thought leader, you know, you're becoming the expert in your space. And, you know, getting your company to be out there representing your company as well. So thought leadership videos, you know, five ways to build your brand in 2020. You know, is, is video production dead? Is smartphone the way forward kind of thing? So, you know, you know, kind of try and create, you know, not a bit of tension, but create, you know, a bit, a bit of difference in opinion in your, in, your, in your audience as well. But show that you're that person, you know, willing to be out there giving your opinion 
and showing the kind of the future of what your industry look like looks like. So then we're still on, and then you might do some behind the scenes things as well. And um, then from social media, they're the kind of the kind of carrot videos. If you like, you're trying to get people to watch them on a regular basis to then find out more about you to move to your website. That so then on your website, you might have videos like about us or a company video. Okay, so people go on, and within 60 seconds, 90 seconds. They're finding out exactly what they are, what they can about you, what you offer, who you work with, things like that. Okay, um, so they kind of they should really be sold if that's if that video is done right and the content is right on there. Okay, and it's narrated right and the me the right messaging's there. And then also a great thing you can have on your website as well. You can have this in social media as well, but it's client testimonials. So through all that, you're essentially you're picking up. You know, you're giving advice, you're creating a warm audience, but you're building trust. And you're making sure that you're the go-to company in your sector to kind of do that, okay? And um, you know, from from doing this myself, people have found me on LinkedIn. You know, marketing managers and marketing people are my target audience. So I met a guy for a coffee, marketing manager of, a, of one of our big clients now, and I was just like, you know, so what do you want to talk about? And he goes, to be honest, Ryan, I've seen all your content online. I just wanted to meet you. He goes, up, oh, we've got we've got um, jobs ready for you to go. So we've done about three or four, you know, projects for them now. Uh, you know worth you know a decent amount you know decent sum of money which is great and that's all from just posting video blogs and, and videos giving out advice on social media so if you're not doing that already guys i'd highly recommend you to do it because it creates inbound leads um, and you know inbound emails and, and, and leads and things like that so here's a kind of recap on that video marketing strategy and, and customer journey feel free to take a screenshot but you know you're warming up your audience you know you, you're doing us in social media then you get to your website and you know you're bringing things to there um, so it's a great strategy to use, but then how often do you post? Okay, so if you're just getting started with video, this is what this is my strategy when I started. I do a lot more than this now, just because we create a lot more videos and things like that. And I'm always just, you know, it's good to be more on social media the more you can. So if you're doing this, what I'd essentially give advice to do is create one video per week. You know, a lot of marketers, you know, look back and measure in three month kind of terms, and you know, you know, in that kind of space of time. So 12 weeks and three months. So create one video per week, post, you know, post one video per week as well for three months, then look back, you know, but what, what you can do is you can always take a day out or two days out to create 12 videos. You know, I don't expect you to, to have the time to create a video per week and it does put a lot of pressure on yourself. But if you could take a bit of time out, correct, you know, write the content, think about the content, write the content, then got that, get that content, you know, produced. You've then got, or someone in your company has then got that, that, content there to post um, and this is how we kind of work with companies as well we create a, a batch amount of content so the market make, making it easy for the marketing manager so they're not going hmm, what do I post today they've, they've got a strategy they've got a content plan ready to go so you're not missing a week as well because it's all about consistency guys you know and that's what that's what really helps you meet your goals you know if you're trying to lose weight you're trying to go to the gym you know you need to you can't just eat one healthy meal you've got to do it on a regular basis so you know be consistent to reach your goals. And again, measure your stats as well. You know, look back, measure, you know, a lot of this is about experimentation. So measure your stats and then plan plan more videos. So on LinkedIn, you can look back and look at your stats. So you can look to see which companies have looked at your videos, what kind of, what uh, what role those people are playing that looks at your videos. So ours is marketing people. So a lot of marketing people looked at this particular video. And then whereabouts they are. So on this video, 569 people were from Leeds. So that's great. And then the rest were majority from within an hour's drive. So I know that video hit some great people in the right roles in the right areas. So that's from one video. So I know that video is doing right. So, so to create 12 videos similar to that, I, you know, I'm quite confident that's going to create a lot of good, good, good kind of uh, feedback for myself and my business. But also it should really start to create good connections and good leads for your business as well. And um, one final question, guys, the million dollar question. So that hasn't actually, oh, it hasn't actually come in properly. So it's actually one main video or a hundred short videos, okay? So a lot of people want a lot of companies to come to us and they want one, one video, and it's great. Uh, they're willing to spend thousands of pounds on one video and it's like, wow, you know, it's a lot of money. That's kind of a bit of an old school way of looking at things. One video is great, but with social media going so quickly these days, one video can get lost and a lot of people might not see that one video you know, unless you're doing a big marketing campaign. But, you know, 100 maybe too much, but what about 10, 20, 50 videos over three, six, 12 months to help you be consistent and, you know, spend, you know, maybe a similar amount of money, maybe a bit more, but, 
you know, within a budget, if someone's being consistent and, you know, constantly putting out good content and polished content, you're going to get a lot more people who are going to kind of buy into you and things like that and eventually become a client. I still recommend definitely, you know, promotional videos and things like that. But, you know, it's 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 doing the, the, the legwork to then lead up to that and to, so people will, you know, will buy it. Because otherwise, you know, how are people going to know about you unless you're kind of active on social media? You know, th there are advertising campaigns, but that costs a lot as well. And what, what a lot of people don't realise is that, you know, you kind of have to put as much money into an advertising campaign as you do, do into a video to really get some good results. And I think that's where video production companies have a bit of a, a shortfall and get a bit of a negative kind of, feedback because they make a nice video but people don't see it so there's a few things to think about there guys so that kind of brings us to um nearly the last bit again i'm just going to reiterate what i was talking about native uploading versus link uploading a lot of people this this applies especially on linkedin okay linkedin doesn't like being linked away from it will suppress your post it will it will make sure that your post doesn't really engage with a, with a lot of the audience so a lot of people make the mistake of putting their video on, on youtube then pasting that YouTube link onto LinkedIn. So what you want to do is you want to get your video file, instead of putting it onto YouTube, well, you can do that as well, but you want to upload it directly to Facebook, directly to LinkedIn. So people are then, you know, so it's actually, it's going to be organic growth and it's, it's you're, not lo you're not leaving the platform because the platform wants to keep you on there. So if you upload something directly to the platform, it's going to help your, your kind of post engage a bit more and people engage in that. If you do want to put a link in LinkedIn, things like that, Put the link in the comments. Don't put it in your post, okay? Um, and that applies to anything, you know, you know, blog posts, things like that. See people do amazing blog posts. Put them on LinkedIn. Go look at our blog post. It get like three likes. They've spent a day writing that, and no one's seen it. It's such a shame. So, and that, that's what I was talking about before. So, just to summarise, guys, if I can give you three things to take away, not just in the pandemic, but you know, for for future, you know, this is something that I've been doing is do your best to be visible, you know, be consistent. And, and to do that, you know, you need to show up every day, really, whether that be posting something or engaging other, in other people's posts in your network, okay? Just make sure that you're seen every day. And, you know, within a few weeks, months, you, people will become aware of you as long as you're kind of posting good content and writing some good stuff on there on social media. But that's a great way, especially in this environment, in this virtual environment, when you're not out networking, it's the, it's the only kind of way to do it. Um, and use video to do that if, if you can and, and want to. So that's that's kind of me. That's uh, that's my presentation. I hope that's made sense. Hope um, yeah. I hope there's some good things to take away there. If we're not connected, guys, and you are on LinkedIn, you know, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop me an email if you've got any questions. If you're interested as well in in a, just under two weeks, I'm launching an online course um, teaching you how to make videos on your smartphones. It's going to be a 15 day challenge, and. Um, but I can I can send you some information about that if anyone's interested. But for now, I'll I'll I'll, I'll hand back to Jess. I'm going to take a deep breath and a drink. So I'm feeling slightly lightheaded. Uh, <coughs> but thanks very much for that, Jess. And I'll I'll hand you back. Brilliant. I'll, I'll stop sharing as well. One second. How do I do that? Oh, I'm not Perfect. sure. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Ryan. <clears throat> Don't go away because there are some questions for you. Uh -huh. um, I found personally, I found that really interesting, and I've been writing notes and making, um, taking stock of what I can do to be more visible through video. Um, some questions that have come up. There was a question going back to the thumbnail on Canva. How do you add that to video? For how do you add that to Facebook? Oh, right, yeah. So, so in um, so on Instagram, basically on Instagram and Facebook, it's very easy. There's a setting when you when you're uploading your video, it allows you to just select, it allows you to upload a thumbnail. Just be aware, if you're on your mobile phone, you need to have that thumbnail on your phone. So Canva has an app as well, or you can do it on desktop, whatever's easiest. Um, on LinkedIn, when you go into LinkedIn and upload a video, um, as you click on your video, it will show a preview of your video, but there'll also be a pencil on there, and that's, that means you can edit. So it then allow you, you can go in and then choose your, your thumbnail from there. Okay. And I'll upload your thumbnail. Okay. Lovely. That was from Alison. Um, from Charlotte Haggerty, how long do you think a video should be? You talked about lots of short videos, but what's the best length, do you think, for someone to Yeah, watch it's, um, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's, it's that million dollar question, really. But if you're getting started, if you're doing a video for social media, I'd say like a fat minute, around about 60 seconds to 90 seconds. Um, I do longer stuff. You know, I go over when I'm giving tips out and that. But 
they reckon there's a, they reckon on social now if um, it's on LinkedIn especially if it's l less than a minute it seems to engage better. Actually, Facebook though, interestingly enough, they like your videos to be over three minutes so they can start putting advertising and things on there. So it's a bit of a tough one, you know. Yeah. So maybe make different size ones for different platforms, but again, it all comes back to experimentation. Um, you know, your first video is not going to, you know, win, win an Oscar. You know what I mean? It's not going to engage the most ever. But just try it. You know, the great thing about social media is, and I used to get a bit caught up with this. I used to think every video had to be doing amazingly, and the truth is, it doesn't. But you know, you're still being consistent by putting it out there. People are still going to see it. Um, so some might might not do great. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just make sure the next one's better or do something different. Trial different types of videos. Like I've been trialing doing some comedy ones on on LinkedIn. You know, realizing that there are humans on LinkedIn and it's not just corporate business people. And they have done the best out of all of them. So I'm going to do more of them. So tips videos, comedy videos. You know, and just mix it up a bit. You know, information videos and a lot of people are putting personal videos as well. Um, yeah. So have a mix. As you say, the important thing is to stay visible, isn't it? And for people who are used to being face to face, this is the way, this is the alternative when we can't yeah. leave our homes. Um, Sean Carr asked, and I think you've answered this already, that um, YouTube videos aren't native to LinkedIn or Facebook. So you, I think you said you need to do both. You can't just get people over from LinkedIn to YouTube. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? A lot of people make the mistake of I see it every day. They'll, they'll go, look at my podcast or... Here's a, a snippet, whatever, um, and they'll just link it straight to, to YouTube um, from LinkedIn. But it, it just the actual platform won't allow it, it to engage. So what I do is I take that snippet and I like, upload that directly natively to either Facebook, in, even Instagram, um, you know, LinkedIn. So on Instagram, you can have, you know, here's a snippet from my podcast. The link is in my bio kind of thing. And then you get people to click to the longer link because social media people don't want to be watching stuff for you know, you know, it's five, ten, an hour, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and there was a question right from the beginning from Jenny Garside, who's 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 creating exercise videos and struggling All to right. get full body in it um, without it going yeah. grainy. So, can how would you film a full body without it going grainy? Mm. Uh, well, what I'd say is I'd make sure you've got enough natural light coming through. So you've got a nice, I can see Jenny there. You've got a nice big doors behind you with some light coming through, Jenny. Um, so so you want to be facing, so you don't want to be where you are now because you're kind of, you, you, your face is um, kind of silhouette and the light's behind you. So so what you want to do is you want to be facing the patio, it might be patio doors or the doors behind you and having that natural light come onto your face. And then, I, I, again, I don't really, um, I don't promote this a lot, but you might actually want to film in portrait, um, especially if it's for Instagram or something like that. But otherwise, you know, film and landscape, but make sure you just go back a bit to make sure your full body's in there. But it shouldn't be grainy, and especially if you've got quite a modern camera. It's, you know, it's all about grain is produced through lack of light, so that it's actually the camera's trying to get used to the dark space. It's bringing all this grain and kind of badness. So, so mm -hmm. the more light you have, if not, invest in some lights. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, light it up and things like that. So, if you want to, you know, you want to know a bit more, just you know, I'm happy to have a chat. Thank you. And then um, Sean Carr's asked again, what, which types of videos do you think do best on social media? For me, advice videos, tips videos and comedy videos like, um, you know, kind of Mickey Taker, like like the video I showed you about the mobile phone. It was everything that was going wrong with people doing videos at the moment. So things like that do quite well. But personal videos are quite good at the moment as well. People's personal journey in, in life, people's I wouldn't say do too many personal videos, but um, things like that, you know, quirky videos, you know, try and be reactive to to what's going on. Like the co-op video, for example, that was really cool because it's reactive. It's in a style that everyone can relate to. It's in a Zoom kind of style. Um, so those kind of videos will, will perform quite well. OK, good. And then there's a technical question from Hayley, and I don't even know if I'm going to read this out right, um, which we think might help Jenny. Um, is it better filming in 1080p or 4K? On I, I'd, I'd always do the best quality you can. So 4K, if 4K. you can. It's, yeah, it's the best quality that's, that's available. It'll take up more space, but a lot of phones now have a lot of space in them. You can always use iCloud or Google Drive or whatever it may be. Yeah. So use the best quality you can. 
Do you think, Ryan, that this is the way forward, that even after COVID passes and we recover, that there'll still be more video content out there? Do you think it was already on a trajectory? Oh, it was definitely it's, definitely, it? it's definitely getting big, yeah, more, more and more. Yeah, of course. It's, um, you know, the scary things for production companies and things like that is that, you know, I read somewhere that from a production company in London that 80% of their, their work's been taken by people actually creating their own videos, you know, companies actually, but that's why, that's why kind of I changed the way we do things. So I kind of advise clients more about the strategy behind it. You know, it can be quite easy to make the videos now, but it's actually, people still get it wrong. So they need a, they need a bit of guidance on how to, what kind of videos to be making, you know, how often and things like that. But yeah, I don't think uh, it's going to take over totally, but don't, you know, but there's some really good videos been made on smartphones. And I see some, a lot of people like YouTubers, vloggers, things like that, doing some amazing videos using video marketing much better than actual video production companies. It's not all about the quality, a lot of that is about the content, but if you can get them both right, then mm. uh, you know, you're know you on to a winner. But, but yeah, but I think for websites, I think the production, you know, the high produced kind of stuff is good and for adverts, but for social media, as long as it's filmed decently and it's good, the content's good, you can get away with, with smartphone video. Great. Okay. Hey, any other questions, Ryan? Before we, any other comments from anyone? Wow, well, Ryan. We'll, we'll we'll be sending the slides out to everybody um, after this. So if you've missed any specific points, you can go through those and and get links and get all the names of the apps and so on. There's some lots of positives coming through on the chat, Ryan, for you saying how helpful and useful this has been. Yeah, cheers. Um, yeah. Even for some, there's some professional video production um, companies on here who've said that the smartphone app info was really useful. So there's something for everyone there. Yeah. It's um, quite so. So um, if people want to connect with Ryan after this, I think that would be, um, you know, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, we'll be sending a follow up email with a link to the slides, but also we'll send a survey. And if anyone's interested in one of our students doing some video for them um, next year as part of a placement project, we're looking for remote projects there. You can put that in in your survey. Simon Wilkes from Planet Sports got his hands up. He's a regular placement provider for us. And you produce video as well, don't you, Simon? Yeah, we do actually. Yeah, we've um, we've we've had to do an isolation show because we were filming a a weekly football show at the Adelphi pub using um, a, a TV production company. So obviously the pandemic shut all of that down. So we had to um, find a way to still do that weekly video. And we're uh, yeah, we've got Pete Farries, who I think is on this call. He's our sort of like video specialist really that is helping us and advising us but we've got um 11 sports sites a music site an entertainment site and um we're now receiving lots of videos from sky sports and sntv and lots of other providers so we're trying to find people that have got the skill sets to edit it together to turn it into great content to put it out onto lots of channels so th this has been great i've downloaded the two apps that you've um, recommended oh cool thanks man that's it's good to hear it sounds like an interesting uh interesting what you do actually yeah yeah it is it's um yeah it's it's a bit full-on but um we're very mm -hmm. very happy that football and formula one are back this mm -hmm. you know soon it's been it's been a grim couple of months but i think we're yeah. through the rest of it it'd be, it might very quickly it might be good if we can have a chat because one of our clients um uses a man united tv presenter it's a it's a it's a new gaming betting app but she's gonna have to start doing her own videos at mm -hmm. home and okay. i'm trying to i've been trying to a teacher how to do green screen from home but the actual company haven't sent her any lights so right. she, she so yeah okay, so, so you, you two take that offline yeah, that we'll sounds chat, like a good connection um thank you so much again ryan a virtual round of applause from from me and from everyone lots of praise coming through lots of preparation for that presentation so really appreciate that um i really looking forward to seeing everybody's videos out there and including me i need to get myself out of my comfort zone and onto LinkedIn visible. Um, if anyone wants to stay connected and network um, between, between now and the next session, which will be next month, um, we do have a Leeds Trinity Business Network LinkedIn group. So you can connect with us through LinkedIn, obviously, but also join a group where we can chat 
and we have a Facebook group. And please tweet about us. Um, we're at LTU Business Net and the hashtag is LTBN. So if you've enjoyed today, please tweet and uh, tag us. Um, and I just want to do a massive thank you to Hayley and to Christopher, without whom we cannot run these. He seriously is there steering the ship. So thank you to Christopher for making it all happen. Most welcome. It's lovely to be back with you all again. I've really missed the Business Network, but um, thank you for sticking with us and hope you've really enjoyed this Adapt and Thrive series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a star. So thank you so much. It's such a boost to see to see such friendly faces and supporters and uh, we'll we'll get through this together. So um, I hope you can make it to the next session, which will be the last one in our series in June. And then we'll start again as as usual back in September. So I hope you can make the June event and let's stay in touch. Thanks again to Ryan. But goodbye, everyone. Thanks, guys. See you later. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye.